Hello students, I am Mrs. Nimna Idris Singha from Advanced Technological Institute, KGAL and welcome to the 12th week of Commonwealth Literature Module. Today I am going to invite you to travel across the pre-colonial Igbo land exploring the literary elements of the seminal African novel Things Fall Apart written by Chinua Achebe. As this is going to be a somewhat lengthy discussion, I have divided the lesson into three segments. And in the first segment, we would look at the areas such as the historical context of the novel, genre of the novel, author and his background. So let's begin. We will first look at the historical context of the novel. In order to understand the novel, Things Fall Apart, it is important to look at its historical context, as it is strongly linked with the colonization of Africa. As you are aware, Europeans' mad scramble for Africa began in late 1800s to early 1900s, and Africa became widely known as the Dark Continent. Not only because of the dark skin or complexion of its natives, the so-called barbaric customs or dense dark African jungles, but also due to lack of Christianity, which European termed as light of the God. entire colonial process of exploiting Africa and its natives was justified by the Europeans under the pretext of civilizing the savages, satirically known as the white man's burden. And this picture in this slide perfectly shows how the Western culture, religion, administration, education, values were forced upon the natives. This became the main subject matter of the novel, Things Fall Apart. Before we move on to the genre of the novel, let me ask you a question. What comes to your mind when you hear the word African? Can you describe it with some adjectives? Keep that aside and now I'm going to show you two movie trailers. Actually, these are critically acclaimed movies adapted from novels on Africa written by famous European writers. The first one is adapted from the novel Mr. Johnson by Joyce Carey. And watch it carefully and note how Africans are portrayed here. From the director of the Academy Award-winning Driving Miss Daisy comes Mr. Johnson. Johnson, why are you so bloody late? So the clock is fast. The clock has stopped, Johnson. Ah, ah, but you were fast when it stopped, sir. It was a simple time. See, ma'am, we've covered. Do not catch foot in hall in the dark. I see. A time for dreams. Great thing, a road, Johnson. When you've made a road, you know you've done something. And a time for dreamers. I think we build roads, sir. It's not on, Johnson. Maybe we don't need money. These villages around here aren't going to work for bloody nothing, you know. They're not stupid. A time when a man's destiny was his to rule. And this great road will make you all rich. All workers will receive free beer. In a place no one man could conquer. You are a very clever geezer, Johnson. You write voucher for this, but spend it on the road. And next year when the new money comes, the road already finished. You understand, Mr. Johnson. You have committed embezzlement and forgery. Oh, yes, sir. Johnson! I'm gonna bleed murder you, you... <laughs> <laughs> If you plead the killing was an accident, that's one thing. But if you lost your head, that's another. From Bruce Beresford, director of Breaker Morand, Tender Mercies, and Driving Miss Daisy, comes the extraordinary story of one man on the road to civilization. 
Mr. Johnson. The next video clip is from the movie Heart of Darkness, adapted from the novel titled The Same, written by Joseph Conrad. Once again, make note of the image of Africa and Africans depicted here. Well, they sound hungry. Did you know these men here were cannibals once? They may still be cannibals. I shouldn't worry about it, though. We're not a very appetizing lot. Presenting an epic voyage into the unknown. Conquest of the Earth mostly means the taking it away from those with different skin tone. Not a pretty thing when you look into it too deeply. Based on Joseph Conrad's timeless classic. We've been facing a very grave situation here, Captain Marlowe. It's a matter of relieving stations. Tim Roth, star of Reservoir Dogs. There's only one reason you haven't got your goods, monsieur. But the carriage the ivory has no captain. Well, now I'm here. We'll have your ivory. And John Malkovich, star of In the Line of Fire. Happiness is to be found only in victory, in commerce, as well as war. In a film from director Nicholas Rogue. Okay, so I hope you have your notes ready. Uh, in the first one, how do they portray Africans? I think you have noticed the biased weave of the European where there's a racial stereotype uh, which shows the native African as a stupid, servile, gullible and a comical character. In the latter, it is a cannibalistic savage. You can hardly even call human. And of course, you can think of a number of other adjectives such as barbaric, primitive, savage, morally degenerate, violent, subhuman, naive. Okay, So you find a quite a racist weave of Africans here in both instances. Moving on to the genre of the novel, I must say post-colonial literature or fiction can be considered as a direct response to the biased and prejudiced views of the Europeans or white writers against natives such as Africans. And Things Fall Apart by Chinua Chibi stand apart as a seminal novel of this genre. So let me define what is post-colonial literature first. It concerns the body of writing which is influenced by the process of colonization, not only at the given time but also even now where the far-reaching consequences of colonization can be felt. There are some important characteristics you need to note. First is that post-colonial literature include what we term as resistant descriptions. These are detailed descriptions of indigenous people, places and their practices which counteract, resist or oppose the racial stereotypes and generalization the colonizers have promoted like what we have seen in Mr. Johnson or Heart of Darkness. Secondly, 
Although these writers want to preserve their native identity, they choose to write in colonizers' language. In this case, it's English. But it's interesting to note how they play with the language, remolding it to reflect the rhythms and syntax of their indigenous languages and sometimes even inventing new words. Thirdly, the actual art form itself is reworked or reshaped by these writers. I think you must have felt it when you were reading this novel that it is quite different from its European counterparts in terms of theme, structure, style, etc. And the narrative incorporates native language, oral poetry, storytelling, and dramatic performances. So you need to pay special attention to these characteristics when you are analyzing the novel. Next, we'll look at some important facts about the author and his background. Achebe's father had been a person converted to Christianity as a young man. And Achebe himself was originally christened as Albert Chinwalumugo Achebe and had a strict Christian upbringing. At the same time, he grew up surrounded by neighbors and extended family who continue to practice Igbo traditional religion and follow its various rituals and festivals. So Achibi himself explained that he lived at crossroads of culture, which undoubtedly given him an insight into both cultures without romanticizing either. And of course, Achebe received education in English. And as we discussed early, it's the unjust racist portrayal of Africans in Heart of Darkness and Mr. Johnson which was taught as African literature at the time, made him write the novel, Things Fall Apart. This novel was first published in 1958, and it was a part of a trilogy. The second novel, No Longer at Ease, was published in 1960, and the third, titled Arrow of God, in 1964. They tell us a story of three generations of the same family who are affected by colonialism. As Achebe's famous saying goes, if you don't like someone's story, write your own. It was exactly what he did when he wrote Things Fall Apart. The novel describes the colonial experience from African perspective, counteracting or resisting the cultural or racial stereotypes created by Europeans. Achibi himself once explained the purpose of his writing this novel. Let me quote. One big message of many that I try to put across is that Africa was not a vacuum before the coming of Europe. That culture was not unknown in Africa. That culture was not brought to Africa by the white world. Unquote. Based on what we have discussed and assuming that you have thoroughly read the novel, there's a study question for you to attempt. Critically review the significance of Chinuachibe's Things Fall Apart as a seminal post-colonial novel. Okay, let's move on to the next segment of our video presentation.